Hello guys, this is Saif Hanyakani Zada. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Tech for All. Today I will be showing you how to configure the access point TP-Link model AC1750. But first, intro. Welcome back guys. So let's not waste the time and start the configuration. First of all, you have to take a LAN cable connect the one side to your access point and the other side to the LAN port of your laptop. The best thing about this access point is that it provides DHCP also. Yes, as you can see here, it has provided me this IP address and the default gateway is this one, which means that I can log into the router or uh, to the access point using this IP address. Open the internet browser using Google Chrome. Now I will navigate to that address which is 192.168.0.1. Yes, as you can see the page is loaded. Here you have to provide a password. I will be using admin. This one. And click on let's get started. I will be using this device as a router and I will not connect any kind of live internet to this so let's go ahead and click on advanced in advanced setup the first thing is a status here it will show you the MAC address of your access point the live IP the subnet the gateway the SSID that it is broadcasting the guest network that is enabled the LAN cable that's connected which IP does it contain and many other options it will only show you the status and the next thing is network in the network let's go ahead and click on internet here if you are using the device as a router and you will not have any kind of firewall in the middle so you can configure your IP if your ISP is providing DHCP no problem it will automatically get the IP here but if your ISP is not providing a DHCP you have to manually select here a static IP provide the IP address subnet mask gateway and DNS then click on save also it has a MAC address clone option it can also use the MAC address of your computer or you can provide a custom MAC address I will use the default MAC address of the device as I am not connecting any live internet to the device I will skip this option and let it be as it is the next menu is LAN this is the IP that you are currently connected to you can also change it to any other IP which you want but I will leave it as it is it is the MAC address and also from drop down list you can select the subnet mask or provide a custom subnet the next menu is DHCP you can also use the TP-Link as a DHCP server and if there is not a firewall in the middle you can directly connect the internet cable of the ISP to the internet board of the TP-Link here you should put the start IP address and the end IP address and also how much least time every IP should have it will be calculating in minutes here you should provide the default gateway primary DNS and second DNS. The next menu is address reservation. It is used to reserve a specific IP address for a specific machine. For example, I don't want my laptop to renew its IP address every 120 minutes. It's out of network. So I will add my MAC address here and then the IP and also a description and click on enable this entry. Click save. The address will be automatically preserved. The other menu is DHCP client. It shows that how many devices are currently connected through DHCP to your device. Currently, I have only one device, which is my laptop, connected to the router. But if you have more, you can see it here. The next menu that we will be discussing on is wireless. Click on wireless and then navigate to wireless setting. Here you can provide the network name that the device should be broadcasting. For example, I will write down here free wireless for all. 
This will be the name of my network. The security type I will leave it as it is. The password I will change it to one two three four five six seven eight nine. The mode should be default. The channel should be auto. The channel rate should be auto, and the transmit power should be high. Click on save. Now the TP-Link will be broadcasting a SSID or a network name called Free for All, and the password should be this. The next menu that we will be discussing on is Statistic. All the devices that are currently connected to your network will be shown here. The next menu that we will be discussing on is Guest Network. A very good option of the TP-Link is that you can configure two networks at the same time, one for your family and the other for your guests. For example, if a guest is coming to your house, he or she wants to use the internet, you can easily tell her to connect the, to this network name. For example, it will be guest Wi-Fi and it will not have any kind of security. He or she can connect her device or his device directly to the guest Wi-Fi without any kind of restrictions and use the internet. USB setting. In USB setting, navigate to device setting. In device setting, if any USB is connected to a TP-Link device, it will be shown here. When I click scan, as you can see, it has not found any kind of disk connected to my TP-Link device. The print server, you can also use the TP-Link as a print server. First, you have to turn it on and install the printer on your computer as it is written here. And then connect the USB printer to the USB port of the router via a USB cable. Then install the TP-Link USB printer controller utility. You can download it from the official website using this link. The next menu is the parental control. Parental control is used to add restrictions to a specific device for a specific time. First of all, you have to enable the parental control, add the device here, device name, MAC address, the time range that the device can access internet, for example, I will choose on Sunday. On Sunday, this specific device can access internet on these times. And then provide a description for this entry. Click on save. Now, what websites the device that is currently connected through parental control can visit? You can add it here or you can use this rule in a different way. Blacklist, for example, these websites. Facebook.com YouTube.com. I will only allow the device which is connected through parental control to use all of the websites except Facebook.com and YouTube.com. You can add the restrictions as you want. What you will be using the access control for? You will be using it for blacklisting or whitelisting. For example, I don't want all the devices around my neighborhoods to connect to my guest network. So I will only use this option as a whitelist. The devices that will be listed here can only use the network. The devices that are not registered will not be able to connect this to this network. For example, I will add my laptop, my desktop, my Android device, my family's Android devices here. They can all use the internet. Any other device which is not mentioned in the list cannot use the network. The other way is that you can use it as a blacklist. Everyone can access the network except for the mentioned devices which is here for example i want a specific person to not connect to my network i will add the device here i will add the device name and the mac address he will not be able to connect the network again system tools in system tools you can change the time setting of the router you can either choose 24 hours or 12 hours and if you have connected the internet lan to the internet port of the tp link it will automatically update the time but I, you can do it manually too i will choose manually and i will choose the date for example today's date is uh, july 18th 
The next thing is the LED control. Should the LED control be turned on or turned off? You can select it from here. But I prefer it to be turned on. You can also schedule the LED to be turned off at the specific time and turn on back. So I can enable the night mode. LED off time. What time should the LED of the device should be turned off? I will specify it. For example, it should be turned off at 7 a.m. And it should be turned on back at 6 a.m. of the next day. Click on save. The LED will be now turned off at 7 of every evening and will be turned on back at 6 a.m. of the next morning. Next menu is firmware upgrade. Firmware upgrade is an important part of the device. By the passage of time, the device may become laggy, it will not respond correctly, or it will not provide or it will not provide the performance that you want. So this is the time to check for an upgrade or you can manually upgrade your device to improve the performance and to remove the lags. The next menu that we'll be discussing on is backup and restore. Here you can take a backup of your system by clicking on backup, save it in your drive and you can restore it whenever you want. You can restore it from this menu, clicking on browse, choosing the backup and then click on open or you can turn the device back to default as it was click on restore or on factory restore all the settings will be restored automatically as it was applied by the company